Well, everybody, today's video is an unboxing and patina on a pair of Allen Edmonds Fifth Avenues that I just thrifted. All right, so let's go. Hello, everybody. It's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of my five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell hoarder. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Here they are. Look at these beauties. These are in really nice shape. It is uh, April of 2023 when I purchased these. I will tell you, um, for the last at least year, in my perspective, year, year and a half, something like that, um, selling shoes on eBay has been pretty bad. Prices are way lower than uh, pre-COVID, and that makes it a good buyer's market. Uh, these are the 65 last. This is the Fifth Avenue. Oxford. The eyelets are sewn under the vamp, so it's closed lacing system. My favorite style of shoes in Oxford. Uh, this is the Fifth Avenue. It's the same thing as the Park Avenue, except it's a quarter brogue, which means it has this line of broguing across the toe. Uh, Fifth Avenue, Park Avenue, Strand are all made on the 65 last, and this is size 11 and a half triple E, which is exactly my size. Now, if you see that logo there, the Times New Roman font with the uh, capital A and the capital E, the rest lowercase, and then it also says, it may be hard to see, but it says made in USA of fine imported leather. You can see the logo there as well. This logo was used from like 1989 until 2018. I believe uh, in about 2006 or 2007 they changed to made in USA of fine imported leather. I guess there was a beef with people saying the leather wasn't made in the USA itself, even the shoe is assembled. Uh, then I think uh, it, that went through about 2016. There's no date code. Uh, if you see the information under the tongue, there's no date code. So these shoes are made between about 2006 to 2016. And look at this, very lightly worn. All right. Heels just have a little bit of wear there, but really good shape. Beautiful shoe. They don't really need a lot. I mean, I could just polish them up and wear them like this. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of patina work to them. So first I'm going to uh, strip off some of the old wax. Let me get some shoe trees in them first. All right, hang on guys. I jumped the gun here a little bit. This is not the Fifth Avenue on the Corn Munch. If you can see in there, this is the, if you can see it, uh, this model is called the Nathan. I know it's kind of hard to see. The Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N, model number 2078. I know at one time it used to be the last digit of the model number, 8078, so the eight at the end would be the last it's made on. Um, I, don't, I don't think that necessarily holds true. Uh, this right here, uh, this is the same size, 11 and a half triple E model 5956. Uh, this is the Park Avenue, and it's six. You know, this is made on the 65 last. Um, if I compare them both the same size, though, if I line up the heels and then compare them, the Nathan does look like it's a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter. Let's see if I can get it lined up. You see that? It's a little bit narrower and just a touch shorter. So, for whatever that's worth, they still fit okay though. Just not as much room for me on the my wider right foot. I tried them on, um, you know, around here and through the toe, but it's still okay. So, um, interesting. So I'm not sure why they made this shoe. I can't find it in the Allen Edmonds catalogs. Uh, I can't view the 2008. It's not 2006 or 2007. It's not 2013 or 2015. But I can't view 2008, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12, or 14 catalogs. So. I don't know. We'll shine them up anyway. I've been battling in my mind what I want to do with these. Originally, I was thinking like a marbled patina. I don't know. I just love this color so much. I don't want to strip it all off. I think I'm just going to add some burnishing. I'm just going to darken some of the areas a little bit, I think is what I want to do. So 
I have some acetone here. Oh, this is denatured alcohol, sorry, not acetone. Well, I'll use this. This is denatured alcohol, so I'll use this. Um, acetone is probably the harshest thing you can use. Acetone will remove a lot of the color. It will lighten it. I'm not necessarily trying to lighten the color. I just want to remove any wax. They don't look or feel like they have much on them. I think that's pretty good okay so here's where i'm at here's the shoes dried they're stripped um i typically like to use my airbrush but it brokey broke it broke here's the lid the lid the metal just fatigued and failed i can get a new one and i'm almost out of the dark red which i think is the dye that i really want to use this is dark red it's just the little bit that i had left and i put a couple drops of black in it i'm going to keep darkening it um, i've got the black over here um and I'm just going to do it the dry brush method. So obviously I've got the dauber. I don't, oops. I don't think I don't think I'm going to need much. But um, let's 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 do this. Let's start with the toe dark. Now the objective here is to when you want to start fading. point at which you want to start fading. I can't get down in there. You want the brush, the brush to start to dry out. not masking off the welt because the welt's black. So what I'm doing here obviously is I'm dabbing on the dye and I'm starting on areas that I want to definitely be darker. For example, uh, the very tip of the toe, obviously, you already saw me do. Uh, around some of those edges where the stitch lines are and uh, up there by the toe cap. Um, and then down uh, where the eyelets meet. And then I'm using my finger, obviously, with gloves on. And I'm pulling the dye to kind of fade it a little bit. And it, as the brush dries, it gets tricky. As the brush dries and you can put less on... Um, but then it sometimes gets to a point where it's just not enough on the brush. Uh, so there's a certain dampness of the brush that kind of is ideal. And I'm kind of migrating more as I go towards dark and light splotches to possibly do a marbled patina. I'm definitely not a marbled patina expert. I've done it a few times. Um, don't really have a definite method for it. If I really wanted to do a mar marbled patina, a full marbled patina, I probably should strip the shoe all the way back down to being as light as possible. But anyway, let's see how it turns out. One other thought here that just popped into my head. My experience with burnishing patina of all types is a little bit too little is a lot better than a little bit too much. What I mean by that is one time I did a patina on a pair of uh, tan walnut colored Johnson and Murphy's. The shoe was a pretty light tan. The toe was a very dark. It was kind of a stark contrast. It was like a dark brown. And a commenter said something I'll never forget. He said, it shouldn't look like you stuck your toe in the mud. So in, in other words, when you do a, just a little bit too much of a color contrast, it can kind of sometimes look awkward. It, uh, it just doesn't look right. Sometimes the best ones are when you don't quite make it bold enough 
and it winds up just blending smoothly and you may not even notice that it's there. I think this is going to wind up being one of those where you may not really notice what's there until you compare it to the original pictures, but I'm pretty happy with the direction it's going. Ugh. So I wasn't recording. I don't know what I recorded. Acetone. Little spritzer bottle. And I already went over both shoes like this. And then I dabbed it a little bit, which didn't really do seem, seem to do much. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. I'm so sorry, guys. Not the brightest bulb on the tree. Kind of going back and forth between the shoes. I don't honestly know that it's really moving any of the dye because I didn't put much on. You know what I'm saying? But that's kind of what I've been doing. We'll see what the result is here. I'll let it dry. And here they've had a little bit of time to dry. You honestly can't see any of the marbling. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and shine them up. I think I'm going to start uh, my favorite shoe polish. Is Pure Polish. Pure Polish products. And this is a new flavor that he, that uh, he, he um, the owner, uh, Andy. Uh, Oregon Pino Cream Polish. And it's a very dark burgundy color. I'll show you why I like this color. Um, versus like burgundy. I'm not, this could have changed. Um, the burgundy you can see has more of like a, it has a red tone in it, but it's really more of a brown color to me. Um, he individually makes these, so, you know, but this, like I said, is that really dark, rich color that I think I'm looking for. And the ingredients are listed in this. The, this is all natural, non-toxic, made in the USA. It's really good stuff. Um, but if you can see there, um, if I can get it to focus. Ingredients, orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil, uh, carnauba wax, and pigment. So you can just use your finger straight with this without any worry about, you know, what you're putting in your body. I might even put some black on the tips of the toes. doing this stuff you should enjoy yourself you know just see where the color takes you this is cream shoe polish by the way not paste wax cream shoe polish is softer thus the name cream and it does a better job of uh, adding pigment and conditioning the leather there's the wax will sit more on top of the leather will not color it as much but we'll do a better job of giving it a higher shine in general and a little bit more protection from water. And if you live in areas like I do, I'm in Northeast Ohio where we have uh, pretty harsh winters at times uh, where you get snow and ice on the pavement, salt trucks will spread salt or some versions of salt. And it's really nasty for the leather. You get that salty water in the leather. One, really, one exposure can ruin leather. It will, like, uh, bubble. The leather will rise up and bubble. The salt is something to change the, I believe, it changes the chemical composition of the, the leather and really messes it up. If you do ever have that, sometimes what you'll see is then you polish your shoes and you get this white powdery residue keeps coming up from inside the leather. Uh, you take vinegar, just regular white vinegar uh, and water, 50-50. You can apply it like with a cotton, you know, ball or Q-tip or whatever, but you just apply the vinegar water mix to the leather repeatedly, and it will actually neutralize the salt. Uh, get a nice, deep conditioning of this, especially seeing that we just... put alcohol, even some acetone into the leather, and that's going to break down the, uh, uh, you know, the elements in the leather that keep it hydrated, the fats and things like that. The fats and oils are going to be broken down, so I really want to, you know, I'm using this as the conditioner, I guess is what I'm saying, rather than a separate conditioning step.
since it does have coconut oil in it. Alright, I'll let that set up. I'll do the other shoe off camera. Alright, it's set for about 10 minutes. Next, of course, pure polish, high shine wax polish. This is equivalent um, to your Saphir mirror gloss. You can put your finger on it, let it warm up a little bit. Start loading it up. Just watch. You can see the pores, right? We're going to fill all those in. First time around, I'm really just trying to load up as much wax as I can onto the shoe without actually globbing it. The way I learned from Andy, owner of Pure Polish, uh, a good technique is to start out like I am here, going back and forth, like front to back, front of the shoe to back of the shoe, you know, back to front, front to back, doesn't matter. And then, go side to side. And then front to back again. It's kind of hard sometimes to count like what counts as a coat. But I guess that's three, if we're counting that way. I guess this would be four. The other shoe. Okay, I think we're ready to see if we can get a mirror shine here. Look at that already. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? What I've found personally is this older leather. You know, these shoes are probably minimum of, what did I say, 2016? So a minimum of like seven years old. This older leather like this sometimes just mirrors. Look at that. Almost mirror shines up right away. I think it helps if the older leather has had time to outgas, I think. You know where like a extra solvents and things are already going out of it. Mm. 
I'm gonna give you my word. I didn't do anything to this off camera, okay? Here's the other shoe. And I had a feeling it was gonna come out well because like you see even there, there's even some shine and that was just from my finger. A little bit of wax, a little bit of water, something. There we go, in the surface there. Just pulling out whatever's on the surface there with my fingernail. Just as nice. I think you get the idea. You guys see what I mean by filling in the pores? watching that reflection of the lamp. It's getting there. Here's where I'm at with the mirror shine. Not bad. some black mirror gloss saphir on the edge of the heel there.
and here they are all finished up. It is a overcast spring day here. So we've got some light, you know, some, uh, but not bright sunlight. There's my dog, Romeo. I'm very happy with the way these came out. Surprised how glossy the uppers got just with the cream polish. These shoes were $35 plus tax and shipping off of eBay. So I think I paid $54 total. Pretty good looking pair of shoes, don't you think? And here are the shoes paired with my Sunday attire here, the day I was shooting this. A pair of Levi's 512 slim fit jeans, uh, non-distressed. Joseph A. Banks uh, dress shirt, you know, you can see the second color, you know, it's kind of a little more subtle on the inside of the sleeves and the collar. And, uh, you know, the red tones in the Merlot shoes pull nice with the shirt. And, uh, you know, you can go anywhere in this combo. Okay, guys, so after a little digging, I did find some information here on that, Nathan. It was kind of hard to find, uh, but according to a Style Forum poster, now, this does not make it uh, correct. In other words, this would not hold up in court, so to speak, but I believe this poster to be accurate. Uh, but according to this poster, the Allen Edmonds Nathan was built on the 108 last, which would make sense if that last digit of the model number does correlate to the last. I know that was true up until some point in time. The 108 last has an elongated forefoot and a tapered and flatter toe box. It is similar to the 222 last. Users report it being true to size in the forefoot, but roomy in the heel. Now, if you look at the video here, this kind of does make sense. Now, the first part of that is exactly from Allen Edmonds' website. If you look at what the Allen Edmonds' website says about the 65 last, it says, quote, often known simply as the five, this is our most popular classic fitting last. It's also one of our longest with a sleek, narrow look that's normally a good fit for those with high arches. Our best-selling Park Avenue is made on the 65 last. Other shoes that are made on the 65 last are the Fifth Avenue, the Strand, Strand Mock, and there are a few others like the Shreveport. Notice how the 108 last does fit differently. You can see the big toe is definitely closer right there to the front of the shoe on both feet. Uh, my uh, feet are fairly snug width-wise, uh, especially on my wider right foot there. Because the shoe is shorter, the front of my big toe, you can see where I was tapping, is kind of brushing up against the front of the shoe. Look how much heel room there is. If you notice when I move and I can, you know, you see room around the heels and I can stick my finger right down in there. I cannot do that on the 65 last. So there's definitely more room in the heel. If you have big heels, that could be an advantage. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try tightening the right shoe to get rid of that V completely. If I were to start from scratch on the 108 last, I might go to a 12W to get a little bit more length, uh, but I could have a problem with the heel. Um, maybe, maybe not, you know, it's all a little bit of a give and take. It's hard to say for sure. Here, I'm gonna try to line up the two shoes uh, side by side once again. Uh, the camera's a little bit uh, uh, at an angle to the shoe, so this isn't quite accurate. Um, there, I think that's a little bit better. 65 last definitely is a touch longer and has a little more room uh, in front of and around the outside of the toes. All right, thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have more pairs of shoes than your wife does, you might want to sub consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much and God bless.
you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists.